we're so thrilled to have the three ambassadors here. Walter Dean Myers, who was the current uh, ambassador, unfortunately couldn't come today. But we have the first ambassador, who's John Sheska. <laughs> and the second ambassador, Catherine Patterson. And the ambassador who will be installed tomorrow to, to serve for two years is Kate DiCamillo. Want to stand up, Kate? Otherwise, they might not see you. <laughs> um, we're also fortunate to have today with us John Cole from the Library of Congress and Robin Adelson from the Children's Book Council, who started this wonderful program six years ago, and actually a little longer than that because it took a while to get it going. But, but they would like to, I would like them to just say a few words about the program and, and what it has meant. Robin, Robin's going to say a few words about the program. I'm going to tell you something you may have read in the Post today, that our National Book Festival this year is August the 30th. Yes, I'm afraid it is Saturday of Labor Day. Uh, we didn't really have any choice on this, but we're warming to it, and I want to tell you we're going to put on quite a one-day show. We also get to have the evening, and we're thinking of separate kinds of programs. Uh, ideally, we would like to, in the future to get back to them all, but right now uh, we're on, and the important thing is we're continuing the book festival through the generosity of David Rubenstein and others and you who have been so wonderful in attending. And so don't be discouraged by this year. Convention Center, you don't have to worry about the rain. We have electricity. <laughs> we can do all kinds of innovative things. So looking forward to seeing you uh, on August the 30th. Robin. Hi, my name is Robin Adelson. I'm the executive director of Every Child a Reader and the Children's Book Council. Two of the three founding partners, along with the Center for the Book in the Library of Congress, of the program that we call the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. Um, it's been called many things, the Children's Laureate, the National Ambassador for Kids Books, the National Ambassador for Kid Lit, for Children's Literature, for Children's Books. It's them. It's them and Walter. <laughs> Imagine Walter. Um, I actually recently found the, the very beginning of the conversation that John Cole and I had um, in email form starting in October 2006, um, which was when we started discussing this program and getting it underway. This program is all about you, all about families, all about children, all about everybody who cares about children's books and reading and books and kids and these are your superheroes our whole plan was to give you superheroes that could stand for something that you all believe in that you could all be excited about and they are certainly masters of and in and about um, they're here for you so I'm not going to take up any more time we have the most amazing speakers guests writers here today the most amazing storytellers Enjoy. I, th I thought it would be nice if we hear from the ambassadors in turn. So let's start with number one, John Sheska. There are a few of you who might not have met John Sheska before. <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs> John has John had a wonderful time being the first ambassador, and we all had a wonderful time with him, as usual, uh, wherever he is and whatever he is doing. It's just been delightful for uh, for his readers and his and his grown-up readers, his teacher, the teachers and <coughs> librarians, what have you. John is. Has a new, has sort of embarked on a new thing, and I'd love him to tell us about it. <laughs> Bring your book. <laughs> Thank you, Jewel. I think. 
<laughs> oh, I like the number one part. I do love that. Um, yes, that was me. I was the first ambassador, and I kind of love that John and Robin came up with this because it is such a brilliant idea. Um, it gives us a chance to go out and just explain what we know to the public at large. Uh, in fact, I was just talking to, to Kate. I remember actually when I was first going to hand over the medal to Catherine, and we had long talks late into the night about the sober and serious <laughs> job of being the ambassador. I don't think she remembers them that way. But <laughs> I, I mostly handed over the keys to the limo and the ambassadorial helicopter, <laughs> but not the jet pack, because I kept that for myself. Uh, and I just had that same conversation with Kate the last couple days. It's been just kind of heartwarming and lovely. That, I asked him for pointers, and he gave me none. Well, no, the pointer I gave to her, don't listen to her. She's not even sworn in yet. <laughs> I have the authority. You'll notice both Catherine and I are still wearing our medals, which we do all the time, much to the chagrin of the TSA. Um, <laughs> But do that when you're the ambassador. You can do whatever you want. Actually, that was my advice to Catherine. I said, you're the expert. Do whatever you want. Tell people whatever you want. So that's it. Do you like that? That's alarming. <laughs> but it's kind of perfect. Like, we know our readers more so than people who are writing legislation for how to make readers. Um, it's what Catherine did. It's what Walter did. We just went out and told people what we knew. We know our readers, and now we have a medal, so people give us a little more like credibility. Like Martha Stewart listened to me for two seconds longer. Uh, <laughs> so that's my advice, Kate. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> and you, you know you can trust me, because here's my latest book. It's a loving, charming book called Battle Bunny, which looks a lot like an old we don't have to say who might have published it, but a, a book that was called Birthday Bunny that was mistakenly giving to a 10-year-old kid who actually is better storyteller and a better artist. So Grand Grand dedicated the book to him, to lovely little Alexander, and he changes Birthday Bunny into Battle Bunny. <laughs> so instead of this sweet little story about the bunny waking up and no one knowing it's his birthday, he wakes up and realizes He's the battle bunny. And yes, it looks like someone has scribbled all over the book because that is what's happened. <laughs> so in, in this part of the story, the original is, birthday bunny made himself his favorite breakfast, carrot juice and a bowl of carrot crispies, which Alex has changed to, battle bunny made himself his favorite breakfast, brain juice and a bowl of greasy guts. I'm the ambassador. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> and I think, and this proves it, right? So, the, in fact, the best moment I think I had in my ambassadorship was I was touring around with Dave Shannon, who wrote No David, and has been known to have little naked boys running around in his books. He gets to do a lot of things he wants. Um, we were at speaking to a bunch of kindergartners, and when they announced that I was the ambassador, Dave seriously told this whole crew of like 200 kindergartners. He said, now, you don't just say hello and goodbye to an ambassador. You have to salam. So put your hands up, and you go like, ah, ah. He got 200 kindergartners very seriously. Going, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And for two years, I did that. I have, I have videos everywhere. The most awkward one maybe being in a Catholic church in Nebraska, where I was up on the altar because it was the only building they had big enough. And it didn't strike me until I was about halfway through explaining it that this was maybe a tad sacrilegious, <laughs> that I was up on the altar and had all these kids bowing to me. But nothing happened. No lightning struck. So once again, proof positive, ambassadors can do anything. Thank you so much, and uh, best of luck to our next ambassador. One, a couple of words about Catherine. I think there is not an award in the country that Catherine has not won for her wonderful books. And I think she's off tomorrow to Chicago to receive another one <laughs> from the Modern Language Association. Okay. From the Modern Language Association. She is a national treasure, and we welcome you. Thank Come. you. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, when I became the second ambassador, <laughs> I, John likes me to emphasize that. It's, uh, <laughs> um, of course, the problem with being the second ambassador is that you have to follow John Sheska in everything, and uh, that's a little more than I can do at my advanced age. Um, but I, I, I used to uh, carry around a speech in my purse for those occasions on which you didn't think you were going to have to make a speech, and I neglected to bring that speech today. But I, since John showed off his book, um, this, the title of my book called Giving Thanks gave me a, an idea for something I wanted to say, and that was how thankful I am for bookstores and uh, for the people who devote themselves to it. And I have a story that's connected to J Joel Stoddard. Can I just tell that story? Because I think it's rather wonderful. I was asked, oh my heavens, what year was it? I'm, t I'm 81 years old. I'm not supposed to remember what year things happened. <laughs> um, I um, was invited, I was asked by the World Bank to go to Indonesia. This was still under the previous dictatorship. I don't know if they've still got one now, but this was the previous dictatorship. And the, the government was concerned because Indonesian children did not like to read. So the World Bank said that they would fund uh, a project to try to investigate this. And of course, it, they very quickly found out that the reason that Indonesian children didn't like to read was because there was nothing worth reading. Uh, so they decided that what they would do is to get together a, a group of Indonesian writers and illustrators, all of whom were banned by the public, <laughs> by the government, and uh, send me and an expert from France, an expert from Ger uh, Germany, uh, and we would meet together and just work out a program to help Indonesian writers write books that children would actually like to read. Well, um, I was trying to gather my brains together and also some books together to take with me, and there was a, a book, the title of which I cannot remember, but I didn't know how I could get one very quickly. So Jewel was at the uh, uh, Cheshire Cat at that time. I thought, I'll call Jewel, she'll know what to do. So I called her and she said, yes, she would express a copy of the book to me right away. But she said, if you're going to Indonesia, you have to call the ambassador because his daughter used to work in the bookstore and they will want to uh, meet you. And I thought, you don't go to a country and just chat up the ambassador. Um, but I got there and we were, we were meeting in a windowless room in the Department of Education and at noon every day they turned off the air conditioning which was kind of a word to us about how welcome we were <laughs> at this place. Uh, and I said to the wonderful woman, Murti Benante, who is very active in, in the World Book of Children's uh, Books now, a world of children's books, and uh, I said to Murti, you know, my friend at the bookstore in Washington said I should call the ambassador, but I'm very you know, reluctant. She said, oh, you have to do that. You have to do that because we're going to have this big party at my house. All these writers and illustrators that can't get published because of the government are going to be there. And if the American ambassador comes, it's going to blow the government away. <laughs> so I called up the embassy and uh, left my message <coughs> that Jewel Stoddard had told me to call the embassy. And I was <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I got a call from the ambassador's wife, and she said, we'd love to come to the party. I'm not quite sure what the ambassador is doing, but I'll check his calendar and we'll come if we possibly can. So here we are in the courtyard of Murdy's house. How many of the people were Secret Service, I don't know, <laughs> but most of the crowd were writers and illustrators that couldn't get published. And all of a sudden, a big black limo pulls out in front of the gate the ambassador and his wife step out and come in there and there's this hush over the crowd and the ambassador gets up and says how important children's books are for children isn't that a great story and
their daughter is now chief correspondent for the New York Times in Russia. Part of their time was spent in Russia when she was growing up. And so she's had quite a career in, in Russia uh, lately. Um, Kate DiCamillo, when her first book came out was Win Dixie, which I'm sure all of you know. It was such a fresh, engaging, delightful book that we just immediately took to it and as, as this, this new voice, a unique voice. And lo and behold, it promptly won a, new, a Newbery Honor Award, which was very unusual for a beginning first book to, to do that. But of course, it's become an iconic book for, for children. Um, and Kate's, Kate's books since then have all been have had this wonderful sensibility of, of kindness and thoughtfulness <coughs> and almost spiritual stuff, but also an incredible sense of humor. Um, and I, I sort of made a list of the different animals that she's done. You, <laughs> you might suggest some different ones. There was, in addition to that grand dog, to begin it all, was a lovesick mouse, a runaway tiger, an elephant who drops out of who knows from where onto a circus stage. And then the beginning reader series about a, a wonderful pig who certainly is related to Miss Piggy as well as William Steig or, or, <laughs> or to Wilbur. <laughs> um, and now she has a squirrel who's had an encounter with a vacuum cleaner <laughs> and in the process has developed a great superpowers. Uh, that's, that's really something. Oh, there's also the chicken Louise. <laughs> so she's had... <laughs> she, <laughs> she has <laughs> a wonderful collection of books with, to take out with her around the country as she becomes the fourth ambassador. And we welcome you today. How are y'all doing? It's really easy to get up here after John, um, but it is very difficult to follow Catherine. So, um, you know, I've talked to a lot of people when John was ambassador, um, people at bookstores and schools and libraries, and I heard the same thing every time. He arrived wearing the medal. He made them carry him around the school library or bookstore. And, um, it, he says that's not wrong. Um, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna do it a different way. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm not gonna be like John. Everybody can relax. Um, so uh, I didn't know that I was gonna have to stand up here and speak, uh, but you know I think this is what I'll say. Um, I did. Uh, this morning I called. I, I I live in Minneapolis, and I. Um, called my uh, public uh, radio station there to do a little interview about being here for the ceremony tomorrow. And when the uh, radio person introduced me, she said uh, that in my latest book, a squirrel gets sucked up into a vacuum cleaner and is transformed into a superhero. And then that's basically kind of what's happening to me here. <laughs> and I thought, that's right. That's exactly the way it feels. Like I have been vacuumed up into something and turned into something much more wonderful than I actually am. And so every time I get intimidated about doing this, I think, John did it. No, that, that's not what I think. <laughs> that's not what I think. What I think is I, I, I ha I'm going to do this because I believe so passionately in how books and stories can connect us to each other. That if I just stay on message, if I don't think about John, and if I do think about Catherine, then I know that I will be okay. Because you guys being here today shows me that there is power in story or else you wouldn't be here. And so thank you for being here. And now I am gonna sit down. Um, and John is not gonna get back up here, right? So. All the hard parts are over with. Right. 
I thought that we, we can also, this is a wireless mic, I guess, can you get it out of here for me? <coughs> and so if you have questions, there's a mic over here. You can to go and line up and ask your questions, and we can pass the mic to whoever you want to answer. So is that a fair deal? So who would like to start? <laughs> okay, you can ask. I have a question for John. Is it true that you made people carry you around? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. That tells a lot about a person. It does. <laughs> <laughs> the mic is over there, and I can pass this down to. Why don't I give it to you, Kathy? Oh, that was an they, excellent question, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> We should also tell people that ambassadors have their powers for life. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not actively serving in when Kate takes over, we still have our ambassadors. Yeah, why do you want to be the ambassador? Yeah, Kate. Are you asking John? <laughs> I'm asking you. You're asking me? <laughs> I want to be the ambassador because I feel like in a, in a strange, overblown, hyperbolic kind of way, stories saved my life. So if I can talk to somebody else and tell them that having a book with them will change their life, then I want to do that. So there's your serious answer. For your non-serious answer, I would like to be carried around a room on people's <laughs> shoulders. So. Me too. Yeah, see? <laughs> yeah. But do you, are you a reader? Yeah. Okay, then we're done here, right? Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, as ambassador, we, we got an embarrassingly weird bunch of gifts. I mean, I have a cape uh, with all my books illustrated inside it. I got a scepter. Um, and at a school in, in California, the kids wrote an ambassador fanfare for like five different instruments. It was for like a trombone and a trumpet and a xylophone and cymbals. <laughs> and, they, and I walked into this fanfare. No, I'm not sharing it. <laughs> Catherine, what else did you get? Well, um, the Children's Book Council gave me a magic wand. Oh, that's <laughs> I think that was sort of the limit. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know that people were giving things to John as much as John was requesting certain things, and then he was getting them. Right, yeah. Yeah. Them. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. We don't know. Yes. Here's. Where are the book signings? Where are the book signings? Can we cut to the chase already? Like enough of the chatter two ambassadors and one that isn't even an ambassador yet. It's getting kind of dull. The book signings will be up here. Like, I'll be behind this one, Kate will be behind that one, and Catherine will be behind that one. How did you become writers? Yeah, how did you become a writer? Do you see how John handed that off? Yes. I'm not really certain that he's written a book. That's why he passed it over to me. Um, so how did I become a writer? Yes. I, I can, it, it's a long, really sad story for the most part, but I'm going to condense it, okay, and tell it very quickly. When I was in college, I had a professor who said to me, you have a certain facility with words you should consider graduate school. And I thought the professor was trying to tell me that I was wildly talented, so I thought, why bother with graduate school? And I went and I bought a black turtleneck, and I said to everybody I met, I am a writer, I'm a writer, I'm a writer, I'm a writer, I'm a writer. And people go, oh, look over there that's Kate she's a writer okay so are you with me so far yes I did that for 10 years <laughs> and then when I turned 30 I thought wow if I'm gonna be a writer I should write something <laughs> so at 30 I started to write and I uh, uh, wrote for six years and got a lot of rejection letters and then I got a call that said we want to publish your book and here I am and that's how I became a writer I could actually make it a much longer story <laughs> And it's sadder when it's longer. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm sure many of you have heard this before, but when um, um, my first, would you like to hear my first published work? Okay. I know it. Yes. 
Yeah, you could probably recite it. I can, well, I know some key words. <laughs> <laughs> there are not many words in it at all. <laughs> uh, it goes like this, pat, pat, pat. There is the rat. Where is the cat? Pat, pat, pat. And, and then what did the teacher say? And this was, pub <laughs> this was published in the Shanghai American School newspaper along with a letter from the teacher that said the second grader's work is not up to our usual standards. <laughs> <laughs> So I stopped writing. <laughs> I, and I became a reader. Well, I, was, I had been a reader since I was three or four. And I just kept reading and kept reading. And, and uh, I said to my husband once, you know, I wish I had the kind of job where you could read all you wanted to and, and you wouldn't have to report to anybody unless you wanted to. And he said, I thought you already had that job. <laughs> but that job was not paying as well as a few words I put down on paper. <laughs> okay, so did you become a writer? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I was a teacher, um, and I grew up loving to read and write. And then I taught elementary school for 10 years in New York and realized I should be writing for a different audience than what I thought. So when I found my audience, that's when I started publishing books. Because before then, I think my work was similar to Pat and Rat. I had one called The Sock, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Not much happened in that story. <laughs> the lonely sock. The lonely sock. <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> um, what is your, f what are your favorite books you've written? What are your favorite books you've written? Why, why do you keep on handing it to me? You know what? I cannot pick a favorite of my books. To me, the, my books are kind of like my kids. So, it, do you have brothers, sisters? I have a sister. So, and if we talk to your uh, parents and they said, pick your favorite child, they would look very nervous for a minute and then they would say, but I love them both equally, <laughs> differently, but equally. And that's the way I feel about my books. So, I can't pick a favorite. Just to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got the mic. I'd say either Stinky Cheese Man or Battle Bunny. <laughs> or Three Little Pigs. <laughs> the rest of them can just cry their eyes out. I don't care. <laughs> Come on, be brave, Kate. We gotta, we gotta get you ready for this. <laughs> Is it true that when Lemony Snicket came to you inquiring about the Harris verdict, you fled out the window after offering him sherbet? <laughs> That is an excellent close reading of, yes, a book. And it's true. And I thought that would keep him in the kitchen for a while, and then I could escape. And I did. And he hasn't tracked me down yet. Where do you get your ideas? How much money do you make? Why is your hair like that? <laughs> These are backup questions that I have <laughs> from many schools <laughs> when things go <laughs> a little sideways. <laughs> we may be almost done here. Yeah, I guess we are. I guess we are. Oh, wait, here's a question. Here, wait, I'll bring it. That's right. A, a slight variant of the previous one or two questions. Uh, what writers or illustrators inspired you guys? You can tell my age immediately when I tell you that uh, uh, the Secret Garden, you know, when I first when I was reading for myself, and uh, and a book that I particularly loved when I was 11 was The Yearling, and it, uh, it's very interesting to me. Uh, I had, I was rereading The Yearling because somebody had asked me to write an article on a book that had influenced me as a middle grade student, and I realized how many echoes in my own writing. Um, yeah. I recognize from the yearling, uh, which uh, I suppose it's not plagiarism, yeah. it's just <laughs> unwitting <laughs> tribute, yeah. uh, unwitting tribute. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I was there with the words for you. So um, uh, what the question was, what writers inspired me? Well, here's one right here. No, here, <laughs> I, I worked, um, I worked uh, in a book warehouse um, uh, when I moved to Minnesota. I was assigned to the third floor. It was nothing but kids' books. I entered into that job with, uh, I think, a particular bias that adult readers have that 
there's something lesser about children's books. And so I would go down to the second floor for all of my reading material. That's where the adult books were. But at, at my job at that warehouse was to go around and literally pick books off the shelf. I was a picker. And it, as a reader, there was only a certain amount of time that I could go around and pick a book before I started to read it. And one of the first uh, books that I read uh, for kids uh, that had been published since I was a kid uh, was Bridge to Terabithia. I remember, and, and then the one after that was The Watsons Go to Birmingham, 1963. And it like opened up something inside of me and I thought I wanna try to do this. So, what did you write? <laughs> <laughs> oh, John's all right. <laughs> well, as a child, I was very interested in Zen philosophy. Um, <laughs> What? I was. I grew up with five brothers, so you had to survive somehow, and it was being Zen. So my very favorite book, I think, that has influenced me for my whole life is Go Dog Go. <laughs> Read that book again, and it's so true. It says, like, the yellow dog is up, the blue dog is down. You can't argue with it. It's on the page. You can see it. It's, it's a prescription how to live your life, Kate DiCamillo. <laughs> And how to be both happy and generous to other people in your answers to questions that people ask you. That's in there. That's in the text. I'm not kidding. And I also love that they just have a giant party up in a tree at the end. I just thought that was the best thing ever. I think with that we will end. Thank you so much, Jewel.